How many of these have you been to? I think I attended four meetings. I, I just missed only one last year. That was the only one I was at, so we missed each other. <laughs> <laughs> I find it interesting. Tell me, wh why do you keep coming back? Oh, for two reasons. First, you know, it uh, attracts interesting crowd of laureates. I like to listen to lectures that are not very close to my own research. It's interesting, it's fascinating. And then the committee does a good job of, selection, of selecting bright young people of all backgrounds. It's nice to talk to them. Okay, and then Heidelberg is a pleasant place. And I like it. Do you find yourself uh, talking more with the laureates or the students? Good question, 50-50. Yeah. And uh, I'll, I'm sorry that I don't remember from your, from your uh, history, but you're a professor as well, yes? Yes. So I assume you do a lot of mentoring, usually. Well, yeah, that's my job. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is, how do you find mentoring works best with your students? Sometimes it works best, sometimes it doesn't. It's a two-side uh, process. Are there techniques that you use? Uh, do you tend to be more hands-on or uh, do you let them move It depends on the student. You know, at Yale I had some extremely good students. Now they are very well-established mathematicians. And the other side of being a really good mathematician is being fiercely independent. So it was very difficult to tell them anything, what they should do. They did what they wanted. Uh, but that works with very good students. If a student is uh, not as good as this were, then I have to participate more. So it all depends. Do you consider mathematics a, a social sport, so to speak? Or because you mentioned independence and Mathematics is somewhere between science and art. It's different from experimental sciences, because the main thing is that in experimental sciences, the criterion of truth is repetition of experiment. In mathematics, it is Her Majesty proof. And mathematicians even don't agree on what is a proof. <laughs> but that makes mathematics art. When a student comes to you and says that they've hit a wall in something, how do you, what do you recommend for them? It depends. Sometimes I, I try to help them to break the wall or tell them that it is a normal thing from a firm mathematician to hit a wall. 99.9% .9 time, that's what we do. <laughs> so one should try. And try and try. Oh. Or think about something else. There are no universal recipes for all cases. And I'd like you, most of the young researchers here are in their 20s, 22, yeah. 27, something like that. I'd like you to think back to when you were around that age and tell me what it was like for you. But I was in, in very different circumstances. It was the Soviet Union. Deep Soviet Union. <laughs> so I was at Novosibirsk University in Siberia. On one hand, it was a wonderful university, maybe the third in the country after Moscow and St. Petersburg. Uh, there were top people teaching us. On the other hand, there were all kinds of problems um, that existed at that time. You mean political problems outside of the... That reflected on us too. For example, I was of uh, wrong ethnicity, which was a big problem at the university. Mm. Did you have a period of discouragement because of the math? Yes, uh, well, I would say that from the first year to the fourth year we have uh, to the third year, for the first three years, we, uh, you know, we had five years of, uh, to make bachelor's degree, but bachelor degree there was like master's degree in American universities. 
I would say that uh, those 99.9% .9 that I referred to before happened 100%. <laughs> and it was pretty discouraging. Starting with the fourth year, especially the fifth year, somehow I became lucky. Or maybe, you know, it's like with a sportsman, especially those who lift weights. They train and train and train and nothing, and nothing happens. And then suddenly it starts working. <laughs> and then I went from one problem to another and I suddenly felt that, oh, so you really did find your path fairly, fairly early, after, or at least after you made it through that, that part? Well, you could say early or late. There were people who did it much earlier. Uh. <laughs> so comparing your students, who I assume you see for years at a time, and the students that you see here, uh, they only have a few minutes or an hour or two with you at the most. Yes. So what, what do you impart to them during that short time? What sort of conversations? But these students here are much more worldly. They, have, they traveled a lot. They have seen the world. They have wide view. Uh, people in Siberia in the 70s did not travel. They were more focused on what they were doing, I would say. Both approaches have advantages and disadvantages. It's good that, uh, this, that now students have wider view. And but for the amount of time that you have with the students here, what can you tell them within five minutes at a time or ten minutes at a time? I can only, if they ask me a specific question, I can comment. Have you found many of the students here uh, working in your area? Not many of them work in my area, but so what? <laughs> <laughs> you still have interesting things yes, to say yes. to them. Uh, I have a few questions, and again, many of them are about mentoring, and some are about five-year periods. Um, well, your field in particular, how is it different now from, from when you were a student? You know, I don't know how the field is different. I am different. Uh, now I also have a much wild, uh, wider view. Uh, you know, many years have passed. I learned something in these years. Uh, I work in, in one of the classical areas of mathematics that is very old. What is that it? is old, algebra. Nice. And uh, this, let us say, 20 or 30 years, of course, many problems were solved, new areas appeared, but uh, the framework is the same. Is there anything that you think will become very interesting or important in the next five years? Whatever I tell you, probably I will be wrong. You know, in the year 19, the predominant top mathematician of that time, David Hilbert, gave a speech with a list of open problems that he think will dominate the 20th century. Uh, the 20th century largely went different way. So the only lesson from all these predictions is that predictions do not work. Are there any grand open problems that you're working on now that you find interesting? I don't know how grand, but of course, yes. All the time I work on some open problems. I have them in mind. Even when I work on different problems, I still have them in mind. What, what are you, if you don't mind me asking, what are you... No, no, some on? problems in uh, asymptotic group theory, some problems concerning infinite dimensional Lie algebras, I should explain I'm not a mathematician, but I know that the people okay. watching this will understand. <laughs> Speaking of mentorship, uh, who are your mentors? In Novosibirsk, I had two mentors. Bokut, his last name, and Shershov. Well, Bokut himself was a student of Shershov, so they were prominent algebraists, and I learned a lot from them. 
Also, in the atmosphere of the Soviet Union, mid 70s, not everybody would agree to be my mentor. Mm -hmm. Because of your ethnicity? Yes. Interesting. But they did. They did. Yeah. Or one of them was kicked out from the university late. As a result? Oh, of this and other independent things. Mm -hmm. And how were they good mentors for you? I all, well, I chose my own problems. Um, but, uh, you know, there are f football coaches of different types. There are those that show how to kick the ball, and there are those that are strong in sort of on the psychological side and inspirational side. So talking to them was an inspiration. Just making sure that you're in focus here. Yeah. They didn't tell me how to solve the problem, which I'm grateful to them for that. For that. <laughs> One thing other laureates have said is, uh, I, I say, what advice do you give to somebody who's at this age, 22 to 27 or so, to spend the next five years? And what many of them have said is, listen to your mentors, but don't uh, obey them. But <laughs> decide for yourself. Yes. No, of course. You, would you give any other advice to no, researchers? No, I also repeat it all the time, especially when uh, giving talks in China or on more Confucian societies where a teacher is, is a very imp important person to say don't listen to your teacher is something. Uh, well, listen, of course, listen, but decide for yourself. Is there anything else you'd like to say about the Heidelberg Laureate Forum? Since you do keep coming back and you sort of, and you know it's so long. I wish there were more mathematicians. There are no, I wonder why. Maybe mathematicians are more nerdy. And this is a social event. There are some of them, it's difficult for me to imagine them participating in all the social events. With others they could. One thing, since many of the computer laureates here are ACM uh, Turing Award winners, and they're all in their 60s and 70s and 80s, uh, when they were starting there was no difference. They were mathematicians. And then computers appeared, sort of. Yeah. Some of them are engineers. Do you see the fields growing together or apart? or? Oh, you know, maybe I'm wrong because I'm saying something about the area that I'm not an expert in, but I think that at least the theoretical side of computer science is more like an area. And mathematics is so diverse. So there are areas of mathematics that are on the border. And uh, they became more prominent recently inside, uh, within mathematics because of the emergence of you know, Google, Microsoft, and so on. Mm -hmm. mm, that's good. Mathematics always has been influenced by, by physics, mm, a great influence. But now it is influenced by computer science, which is very good. Anything else you'd like to add? Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>